there's this wonderful thing called the why in business and in life. Uh, and I want to share with you, this is a little bit of a sort of little indulgence, if you'll allow me to do this for, for a moment. Um, there's a thing called a why. Uh, this is probably the thing that, that motivates us most subconsciously most of the time. And I think it's important occasionally to just drag it to the surface and understand what our why actually is. Um, let me tell you a little story, if I may. Uh, you'll recall, if you go back, you know, I'm sure you've read about it, heard about it. Second World War, lots of Europeans <coughs> were finding ways of creating a better life for themselves. Yeah? In the 50s, lots of people from, as you know, from Italy and from Greece and other parts of Europe were heading off on a journey to go, you know what, there's a better life out there somewhere for us and we want to create a better life for us and our families. Yeah? That picture is my family. That's me, the snappy dresser on the left, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> yeah, stylish young fellow I was. I still haven't forgiven my mum for that suit, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, and you know, like, like many Europeans, my, my family came here in the 50s looking for a better life. Yeah. As many people do today from other countries, and we know that this is a common thing around the world, either to, to, you know, to get away from a situation that is, that is terrible, which we're seeing today, or just in search of a better life. And I've watched as a, as, a, as a youngster, I watched these people come to this country and the people around us, you know, in our, in our friends, friendship group and our family, I watched them start to work very, very hard to build a new life for themselves and for their kids. And for, you know, my, my father worked uh, in a factory when he first got here uh, in Footscray and then finally saved up enough money to buy a farm. So I'm, I'm a farm boy from way back. I grew up on a farm in the Dandenongs. And he bought a couple hundred acres uh, in Cockatoo. Uh, but before he could do that, he worked on his father-in-law's farm, on my grandfather's farm. Then he bought his own farm and he worked on two farms, right, to try and put some money together. So he'd worked the mornings on my grandfather's farm, then the afternoons on his farm, and he did that for many, many years and carved out a life, yeah, for him and his family. Now we, we would, you know, when you hear some people speak at these sorts of things, you'll hear people tell you about the fact that they had no food and they lived in their car or that, you know, you, you know those stories that you hear people talk about? I've never had that experience. I've been fortunate. I grew up in a family that, you know, worked, worked hard. We didn't have anything fancy. We didn't have anything spectacular. But we never hungered. <laughs> We're Italians for God's sake. We've always got food. <laughs> There's always food. <laughs> so we, we were never hungry, you know. Okay, we didn't have 14 plasma TVs and three you know, BMWs in the garage, but we, we, did put, we did okay. They worked hard to put us through school. We went to good schools, we got a good education. And they worked hard to build a life, right? And then in 93, when things got very tough here in Australia for business, and some of you might remember this, it was a very difficult time. Um, by that stage, my, my mum, who was a bit more entrepreneurial, had uh, got involved in business. They bought a little bakery and they were doing some food businesses and what have you. The farm was still there. We were sort of moving into this other area of entrepreneurship. Um, although I didn't know what it was called those days, but it, that's what it was in effect. Um, and so we, we'd built this business and, and they'd invested in this business. And unfortunately, in 93, they lost the whole lot. All of it. The house, the cars, the business, the whole lot. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. Now what? But you know what? They're hardworking people, right? They went, that's OK. We can just start again. I go, cool. So I watched them start again. And then they spent the next 20 years rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding and just trying to get a living happening and looking after the kids, you know, all the stuff that families do, right? It's tough. And here's the really sad part. Uh, when, when we got to, a couple of years ago, when my parents were in their 80s, you know, late 70s and 80s, um, when they got to retirement age, basically, uh, they had not had a plan for investment. They had not had a plan for building passive income. They did not have a plan for creating vision and structure and systems in their business. It was all about their work, right? They worked, they, they made money, That's, that was the formula. Pretty simple, I go, I get up, I work hard, I come home with some money, I live. That's the formula. The problem with that is when you get to 65 and you want to stop, you can't. Or if you do, 
you don't have much left. You don't have much to live on. You have a house, which is kind of cool. I'll grant you that. The house is nice, but it doesn't feed you. Yeah? The house doesn't provide passive income. So, I wanted to share that with you because that's why I do what I do. Yeah? 